My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time a prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today the Church starts a special period of prayer. It's called the Christian Unity Octave, or the Octave of Prayer for Christian Unity. It starts today on January 18th and goes through the Feast of St. Paul on January 25th and includes the 25th. And Jesus, we come into your presence today in prayer, and we want to make this our petition that all Christians may be one, that we may be united to our brothers and sisters in Christ and move towards that full union, that full communion with you in the church. And I think to do this, Jesus, in your presence, it helps to be optimistic. And we have a great optimism in the fact that all Christians believe in you. All Christians, Jesus, believe that You are the Son of God, and you are the Savior of the world. We see in today's Gospel, Jesus, how many people want to be near you, how many people realize they need your help. And this gives us hope that we can spread the faith and we can overcome differences in the faith. Because deep down, everyone needs Jesus, and everyone needs the same saving truth. And that same saving truth would lead us to union with each other in the church, would lead us, Jesus, to a full union with you. We read in the Gospel of Mark, and he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they should crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Jesus, this is an image of our world. Christians and non-Christians. We all have different afflictions and diseases, at least that disease of sin. And we need you, and we press upon you, and we reach out to you so that you may heal us. Help us to be united, Jesus, in our recognition of our need for salvation. Help us all, Lord Jesus, to be humble enough to realize that we need you. The whole world needs you. I need you. And help us, Lord, to be united in discovering you as the solution to these problems, as the solution to my sinfulness, as the solution, the true solution to the problems of the world and of every man and woman. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. An incredible witness from the enemies of Christ to the truth of Christianity. The unclean spirits who are the enemies of Jesus, whom he has power over and he casts out of those poor possessed people, witness to the unity of Christian faith. You are the Son of God. This is what all Christians have in common. This is what unites us already. Jesus Christ is God. God the Son come to save us. To pray for unity, Lord, during these eight days of the unity octave, is to pray for something that we pray for every day in Mass. We ask you, Lord, to grant peace and unity to your church on earth. Peace and unity to your church on earth. And we know that refers primarily to the Catholic Church, that we be united among Catholics, another urgent need and prayer of our time. But in a way, It also refers to all Christians. If Christians are baptized, well, then they're already members of the same Christ. They're divided brethren, we're separated brethren, but we're still brethren, right? There's only one baptism, there's only one faith. And so in a way, all Christians are already united in Christ. Those ecclesial communities, those separated brethren of ours are united 
by baptism in Christ. We are united to them by our baptism in Christ and by the faith that we already share. Faith in you, Lord Jesus. And in the Mass, we pray for peace and unity according to your will. And that will was expressed by our Lord very explicitly in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, at the Last Supper. That they may be one, even as we are one. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Jesus, this is your prayer to the Father, that we may be one, that we may be united. And we take that prayer of yours, Jesus, and we make it our own prayer to you. Lord, unite us, unite the church, unite all Christians. What a powerful force, an even more powerful force than it already is. Christianity would be, Christians would be, if we overcame our differences, if we came closer to each other in the unity of faith, in the unity of government, in the unity of the practice of the faith in the sacraments, would be a force to be reckoned with. So Jesus, we ask you to unite us. It reminds me of that movie, Braveheart, when Mel Gibson is playing William Wallace. And at one point, those clans that are fighting against the crown of England come and they meet and they urge William Wallace to unite them. And they say something like this, unite us, unite us, unite the clans. Well, we want to approach Jesus with even more urgency and even more desperation, but with a lot of confidence. Jesus, you want this, so we ask you to do it. And help me, Lord, to be a instrument, an instrument of unity. Let there be nothing in my life, Lord, that unnecessarily divides or separates me from anyone, and especially from my fellow Christians. Help me to be a bond, a bond of charity and connection and faith between the church and everyone else, and especially and especially our separated brethren, my fellow Christians. Lord, live through me. Make this desire of yours that we be one, my own. Love those members of your body who don't have full membership with the church. Love them and draw them into the church through me, through my prayer, through my sacrifice. Through my prayer this week, this octave of Christian unity. How can we not go to our mother, our mother Mary, for this intention? She is the mother of the church and therefore, of course, the mother of all Christians. And isn't that what mothers want? Peace among their children. How much do sibling rivalries or dissension or fights among siblings hurt a mother's heart? It's one of the great desires that mothers have, that their children love each other, that their children get along, that their children support each other, that there's no strife between her children. And Mary's the same way. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us and help us to do that apostolate ad fidem, that apostolate towards the faith. Help us to be people who love enough, to care enough about bringing people closer to the Church. Our Lady Mary, Mother of the Church, Mother of all Christians, Pray for us. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect, my Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.